Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad to hear this morning. Got a big show lined up. First, I want to thank Victor Hasco for stepping in. What a great job Victor does. He's just a real deal, and he always count on Victor to, to step up to the plate. I really appreciate it. And bringing us all that news over there in South Boston, all the exciting things in Choctatchee Bay and, and those landing, boat landings and all. It really looks good over there. So, you know, we get people from all throughout the panhandle coming on the show and giving us good information. So, uh, hats off to Victor. Good man there. Uh, the weather is going to be warm, 74 degrees today. Here it is, February the uh, 19th, and 74 degrees, uh, low 60 tonight. Water temperature, remember last Friday we talked about it, it did go up 5 degrees in a one week last week. But now this week, the last couple of days, it's been down around 62. It's 62.4 this morning. And we all just, you know, uh, we're the Spanish, but we're ready for Spanish. Everybody's all rubbing their hands and getting ready for Spanish, but it's at 62. So we're going. Our, our guest and I are going to talk about it this morning about maybe when the Spanish is going to show up. We're looking at the river readings. Our approach goal is still high, folks. It's over 20 foot, and we had anticipated this. We talked about it last week. Once the once the big river gets high, it stays high for a while. It don't go up and back down. It is, and it's, it's over 20 foot, and it's, it's really a uh, a lot of water out in those woods. Choctahatchee now is right at right at 11 foot, and that's high for the Choctahatchee. It's going down. Choctahatchee going up, and Appalachian Coast going down a little bit. So we got some uh, real uh, tough times on the river right now. Tide chart: uh, We're looking at low tide this morning, 4:26, and high tide this afternoon at 6:07. Marine forecast coming out northwest at about 5 to 10 today. We'll take a break and be right back with our special guest. All right, welcome back and welcome to our regular guest here, Daniel Cole. Good morning, yeah, Daniel. How's it going? Good morning. Glad to have Thank you. Thank you for having me. Our boating expert, but also he's an outdoorsman in the true sense of the word because he enjoys so many outdoor activities. And we're talking, I always sort of get his angle on what's going on in the, in the bays and the gulf and everything. And what we're talking about, now we know you don't need to anchor out in the channel. It's more, you don't need to do it, but it's also illegal to do it. But people, are people still doing that? Oh yeah, they're still doing that. We, uh, we're actually assisting a firm out of Miami with a case that happened. Uh, I'll say is a sailboater threw a line out into the channel and, uh, and, and in a busy narrow part of the, the ditch as well, I should say. And, uh -huh. So someone come along and uh, they ap accidentally ran across the anchor line, which was not their fault because it wasn't supposed to be there. But anyway, but suddenly it's the boater's fault that had legal right away in the thing. So this, yeah. we're going to help somebody get that straight. Okay. <laughs> protect their interest because so you know we talk about you know the rules and regulations of the navigational channels, and we got to keep those channels. You can't throw stuff o over there, and you can't you can't stop in it. You know, uh, hey, when this came it. up, I went back, I looked, I had a ton of uh, pamphlets and information uh, that had been bequeathed to me by Rick Corley mm -hmm. for boat safety and just generalities and stuff. And I loaded them all back up in my bag because apparently that's, someone needs to read them, so we're gonna be handing those out pretty regularly. <laughs> well, we, we, talk, we talk about that, and I, what happens, you, we, we assume everyone knows these rules and regulations because most of us do. But there's always some people who, and I don't think some people do it intentionally. I, I mean, some, some do, but they don't care. We know that. That's like, you know, outlaws and hunting. But some people don't care. But some people, I, I don't know if they know it. But, you know, that's a good analogy with all the, uh, with all of the information we get these days and all the different safety measures they're trying to, I like to say, inflict on <laughs> people who enjoy the hunting <laughs> inflict sports. Inflict is a good word. The shooting sports. <laughs> You know, there are actually more people die in boating accidents every year than there are in uh, in hunting and gun-related accidents. So you would think they would uh, enforce people to, if you've never owned a boat, you know, I'm, I'm not, and I'm not a big ag advocate for forcing anybody to do what they don't want to do, but wow. uh, there should be some sort of little more attention paid to people being better, not more mm -hmm. knowledgeable, just better equipped when they buy a boat. Yeah. They've never had one. This is what we expect. You yeah. Know? I was talking to Powerboat Squadron, Mike Fitzgerald, and those guys. They're going to be coming up. We have Safe Boating <clears throat> Week coming up in a month or two, and we're going to talk about the, the safe boating again. We strongly recommend that. If you've not yeah. had that uh, course, then mm. yeah, be a part of that. Uh, there's uh, there's several of them. I know uh, 
uh, Mr. Bob Fowler out there at Marine Max. He has one yeah. uh, especially for women. Yeah. And it's a nice environment. Bob's a great guy, you know, and it's no pressure and, uh, you know, the support of all the women coming together, mm -hmm. you know. It's a good learning environment, yeah. you know. And, and it's a good time of year to do it right now, sort of in yeah. between, the right before spring and when all the boats are going to be out there and all. And again, all our buddies and, and friends and, and uh, families coming out from especially from Alabama and Georgia who aren't exposed to a lot of things. We, it's our, really, it's our responsibility. We live here along the coastline or in the Panhandle to, to sort of let them know you can't do that. Because well, and you know, in our area, we're blessed with some Cracker Jack ladies who know how to operate a boat mm -hmm. and uh, over the years uh, I've come across several instances where uh, people in distress who were unable to bring their own boat in a husband mm -hmm. and wife team were able to help them come in whether if it was a successful tow or in some cases uh, uh, one of a you know either the husband and wife had to get off on the boat mm -hmm. and and drive it you know and we've got some really cracker jack ladies in our area yeah. but you know a lot of women are afraid to take that on and uh, you know, they don't realize if, if, if you let your husband do everything all the time, That's if you have point. a heart attack or some sort of health issue, good point. Uh, you know, you're stuck waiting mm -hmm. on somebody where, you know, it, it's not hard and, you know. Yeah. A good point. That has happened. A that lot. Has happened a lot. And, uh, and, one, but, and the one thing is that everybody can control it, if you even might be ignorant of the rules and regulations, you can't control the speed of that boat. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, there's no excuse in, in putting a hammer down when a bunch of people out there. And you've seen, yeah. that, you've seen that in fresh water and in the bay system. Have you, let me ask you, have you ever seen a video of that going on where there was a woman at the helm? No. No. Typically, when you see someone good, showing out and point. they have an accident, like there was this idiot I saw a while back had 10 people in his boat going so fast, yep. he, hits, he hits something, he flips, and he almost kills everybody in his boat. Someone's always the guy it's showing all, out. Right. So I trust female yeah. captains. we got several of them in our area. Yeah, that's, that's a trust good point. Them. You know, you could do a parallel between the uh, the drivers, the teenage drivers going fast yeah. and all. You know, 99% of the time is those teenage boys doing it. So yeah, that's, that's, right. the, that's the mentality. And that's that mother's instinct to, to protect whoever's in the boat and all. I think the ladies are really good about that. Us that's guys, absolutely right. Some of us guys are morons when it comes to that. <laughs> so we'll take a quick break. I think we all have our moments. <laughs> we'll <laughs> quick, quick break. All right, welcome back. Sitting with our buddy Daniel Cole, our boat expert here. We're talking. Uh, we're going to get in some pictures now because we got. We're talking about Spanish mackerel, real close to Spanish mackerel today. I like Spanish and, mackerel. Well, we're going to talk about that first. We got a couple of pictures of was all kinds of things. This past weekend, folks. Uh, this is this is Donnie Copper, one of our loyal viewers, and Donnie is a good fisherman. But I want to I want to mention about the redfish. I've, I've got all kind of text and everything. There were some, a lot of redfish in the bay system. I can't tell where because some people sort of marked out in the background and they didn't want to tell. But well, there were some good redfish in the bay system this mm -hmm. past week. How about some nice speckled trout? Wow. Uh, Raymond Lee Atkinson up there in pretty bayou, 23 and a quarter inches. That's a fine one. And uh, he released that one. And of course, how about when you see a seven year old uh, this past Saturday morning? That is Barrett Starling, seven years old. That's an option, isn't it? It is. He's seven years old. He, I think he was cold Saturday morning. So, and Randy Sinoda up there at Deer Point. So all, all these local pictures, so you can see what's going on. We've got all kind of neat things going on. Yep. So, uh, you know, we we're talking about, again, getting back to that boating safety. I don't want to belabor the point, and we're going to talk about it a lot later, but in the boating industry, you run boats every day. Mm -hmm. Is there any particular boat that has more accident prone, any particular style hull, anything? That you have something high speed? The high speed, <laughs> I was talking about, the fast boat. The high speed ones? Yeah. That, that seems to be, you know, the ones that, I don't know, seem to encourage people to feel stronger than what they really are mm -hmm. and try something they haven't tried before, which doesn't turn out well. But I will say this across the board, another point we didn't mention earlier is something we do see is uh, the lack of use of kill switches. You know, if you're on your boat by yourself, you especially use your kill switch. Uh, there must be 50 videos on YouTube of people that they fell out of their boat. There's fell no out. there's no kill switch attached, so the boat's just going around yeah. in circles. It endangers everybody there. They're in danger of being ran over. So it's just such a simple thing, and uh, you know, there's nothing uh, intelligent about not using you know basic safety means like that. Mm -hmm. One of the things I want. Uh, one of the things. Uh, we're jumping back and forth now. I, I do want to talk about, uh, I, I got some pictures here we're going to show, but our buddy Billy Grantham, you know, we got we got our sort of Panhandle Outdoors team spread out throughout the Panhandle. We had South Boston on yesterday, and I, I was trying to find 
trying to find Billy Grantham, and we found him. He was up here in Nashville, Tennessee, folks, over the weekend. He was up in the uh, National Wild Turkey Federation. He, he and his wife took off up there. I think the first time he's been on a plane, they went up there to the uh, National Wild Turkey Federation. Uh, big, uh, it's a huge week they have up there. And we talked about it, but Billy got to go. I know Ken Paramore, he and Deb, they go every year. And I don't know if they, they got, I don't know if they saw each other. I think he was looking for them, but couldn't find them. But anyway, we're going to get, get those guys on the show uh, probably next week or two and let them talk about that big convention they had up there in Nashville. That's really large. Yeah, it, a, lot, a lot of folks go to it. One of the things, too, uh, as we move on along, I've, I've looked at more pictures and all, but I, again, I want to get back to those redfish, and then we're going to talk about Spanish. But those redfish, you got to keep in mind, redfish are, they're such a unique, they, they, they're smart because they're traveling schools. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, they'll move around. And I had some people uh, about four or five days earlier that located them, and they took a friend, he'd been in this situation, and I found those redfish. And went back the next day, and guess what? They're not there. <laughs> have you ever done that? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have, and I've done that, you know, not just with redfish, yeah. but I've done it with speckled well, trout, I've done it with exactly. everything. Exactly, and that's the thing about it. You just got, you know, get, and you all know what I'm talking about. You get those conditions just right, you got them located, and you have a bang up day. Sometimes you buy yourself, I can't wait to bring uh, my buddy Joe with me tomorrow. I call him up, hey, 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 I got him now. Well, tomorrow, just take off work, come on, and go out, and, and it's fun, and we've done it over and over again. And, and we did that one time with Pompano. I never will forget it. We had them found. We had lo located a buddy of ours down on St. George Island. There's thousands were down there. And uh, they were catching them. And so we went. I took off work, on which I hardly ever honestly took off work. Took off school on, a, on Wednesday. Now. On a Wednesday. Oh, okay. So, this was back then. Yeah, back then. <laughs> I, I took off on it because and I, I normally do that, but I, I just couldn't resist. And old Benny Forehand and I drove down there <laughs> and to ride where that spot was. We didn't catch a one. We laughed about that. The funniest part, I told the ladies in the lunchroom because well, I sometimes bring them a mess of fish. I said, all right, y'all bring your ICS to Thursday morning because I'm going to have some pompano for y'all. So I had to go back Thursday morning to school and I sort of walked through the lunchroom like this. <laughs> <laughs> so we've all been there and done that. So it is fascinating. but. Uh, uh, let's get to Spanish mackerel now because we're going to talk about Spanish the next couple of weeks because we're right on the verge. So, and you like to eat Spanish. I love Spanish. Yes. Tell us how you cook them. Uh, I just take them out and grill them. Uh, I'll tell you, I don't know what it is, but if you use the mesquite wood charcoal from Kingsford, mm -hmm. no matter what you make, the seasoning is just half the equation, but that wood smoke makes a difference. That's a good point. And, uh, you know, from a health aspect, you get a lot of good omegas from them. They're an oily fish. So they, you're going to get a lot of good stuff out of them, even better than, say, grouper or one of your more, you know, prized fishes. And they're in abundance. I mean, I, I'll load up the freezer and eat on them all year. It's a mm -hmm. good fish for freezing. It doesn't tend to go bad as quick as some. Mm -hmm. Like redfish is a very tender meat. Yes. It's easy to freezer burn yes. uh, redfish. Yes. Same yes. thing with speckled trout. But yes. uh, in my experience, the Spanish seems to hold on longer. Is and that, even a yeah. and even a blind hog like me can root that acorn up. So you go out, you put some lines out. You you're going to catch manage. <laughs> I know. I, you just fillet it out and, and, and lay it out on the grill. Did you fillet it out or just? Oh no, stake them uh, just stake straight them. across the body. Across. Okay. And then uh, lay them on edge, and then uh, of course that's where the Greek heritage comes out. You know, you use mm -hmm. the Greek the Greek seasons and the and uh, yep. some really fresh virgin olive oil, just a little, and. Uh, Anyway, I, I I love it. You know, my my wife, my little girl. You know, they love it. It's just that's it's cool. a good thing to have. That's cool. So y'all to give it a try because we're right on the verge. We're talking about the third fog of March. Now we're talking about we've already had like three fogs in February. Right. <laughs> and uh, so I, I'm saying this week, uh, sometime this week, especially this weekend, I think there's gonna be some Spanish caught. Well, and you know, uh, I've got a buddy. He sent me a video the other day. Like the, everything's running really well. Okay. Uh, he caught 28 mullet one throw. No kidding. Yeah, and they were nice size. They weren't little ones. They were really nice size. Was that down that place cold area or back up here? No, that was right up here off of uh, Redfish Point. All right, all right. That's um, the, when you hear that right there. That's the sign. Yes, yeah, so they're definitely moving in, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. there's been a lot of other stuff that's been really good. So uh, it's just us finding the time to go do it. You that's know? right, finding time. We're going to take a quick break and show you some good places to go. We'll be right back. 
All right, welcome back. Let's take a look at our fishing game time today, brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers down in Port St. Joe, George Durham, a very good staff down there, just full of good st stuff. I love that, that store. You've been in that store a lot. <laughs> Every time I go down there. We like, my, my truck just turns that way when I yep. go by there. <laughs> I swear. Our time today is going to be 8.52 to 10.52 this morning, and this afternoon, or this evening, 9.19 to 11.19, so all kinds of things going on. Now we're talking about you know things starting off pretty good. Take a look at this picture here, folks. This is fascinating. This is Jared Dollar, a uh, good couple of hours in Carabell, Florida. Okay, so he was out there flounder gigging down there in Carabell. So you're talking about the mullet coming back in. Those flounder now, these flounder are coming back in now too. Right. And this is interesting because the giggers don't usually get them this time of the year. Mm -hmm. They get them in late summer when they're going out after they sort of fatten up a little bit. Yeah, that's right. And uh, so the same way with the, with the mullet, you know, the mullet's coming in, it's, it's a good tasting mullet now because they've been out in the Gulf. Well, that's exactly right. And, uh, you know, that, that's three good examples right there. If you've got uh, Spanish and you've got uh, mullet and you've got, you know, flounder, three totally different unique fish there, you know. Mm -hmm. They have their own special way of cooking, but either one, any of them, any day of the week, you can't beat it, you know. Uh, well, what, uh, you, with the Greek, uh, Family heritage you have, y'all do a lot of grilling and all, don't yep. you? And love smoking it. and that kind love of Love it, yep. And it comes from the island, doesn't it? I mean, it uh, back probably. Back uh, it down. Yeah, our family, uh, they're very dirt poor. Uh, in fact, we still have a lot of family there, but they're in a little island called Specius. Okay. And it's their, uh, it, it's a tiny little fishing community and, uh, you know, very poor, very area. But uh, those over the years, it's, it's a, you know, our family made all the migrations that this, typical of Greek heritage. This, you know? is, this is so important, and I, I'm working on a little project with this. And uh, the, Well, you look at the Patronus family, they came from the island of Patmos. That's right. The same background, and, how, and I've talked to them before, and it's just a fascinating heritage we have here, and we really need to recognize that. And Well, uh, I'm going to tell you now, that I'm, I'm going to go out here because, <laughs> you know, there. people line up to eat at Cap Anderson's. That is probably some of, you know, they have some of the best Greek food there you're going to get. Yes. It's not, it's not advertised as Greek, but you know that's what it is that's when exactly you're That's exactly where it comes from. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, that, and, that tells you, we may not know, we may not know much, but we know how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> what a good fish. Well, that, that's it. I'll tell you what we got to do. We got to get together, maybe, maybe uh, do some video of you cooking something, or maybe uh, you take some pictures and, and uh, talk about you cooking different things. And all. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, but uh, you know, it, it goes back to early, early uh, people lived off the, off the land and off the water. Well, I tell you what's funny is I have never in my life ever been able to fry a piece of fish. You don't ever fry it, do you? Well, I, I would love to, but every time I've fried, it's not turned out well. Grilling, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I, I've never had a problem with grilling because you know it's just passed down. But it's the frying it's, well, and. Uh, you know what? We might we might ought to get Gordon Ramsay on here one day, and we turn it into a fish cooking day, huh? We can do that. We can do that because people love to do that, and it's, it's a lot healthier for you and uh, than, than frying. Share a recipe, it, yeah. Well, and you know, and, and frying a lot of that just has to do with what you're actually cooking it in, right? That's you know, right. what types of oils, and mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there's some awesome stuff out there, and uh, you just can't go wrong with it. I tell you what, I love. I'm a sucker for gumbo cook-offs, too. Oh, yes. I make homemade gumbo, and uh, it's not probably what real Louisiana people would call gumbo, but I love it. But I, I'm down to try any of it, you know. It's all good. Yeah. So you get somebody who can make good gumbo with some real French fresh bread, you know? Yes, yes, that's good stuff, yeah. It's fascinating, and they, our our heritage of not just the, the fishing part, the heritage of eating the fish is strong. Well, you <laughs> you don't catch strong. it for fun, you know what I mean? I mean, you do, <laughs> but. Yeah, I'm gonna add some names. In fact, we wanna we want to get some stuff. We're gonna get some stuff away tomorrow on the show, but we're gonna have some names here. Uh, Ralph Turnup in Indian Bluff, and also uh, Lucretia Turnup in Indian Bluff, and you can uh, add, you can put your names in any time you'd like to, and we'll add them to it. And remember, every Friday we draw for the seafood. You know, I've got a Mr. Tackle Box we're gonna give away tomorrow, maybe. And also those $25 gift certificates to Los Andahitos. So we, we're in a giving spirit here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's a generous uh, lifestyle. Yeah. I've never known uh, selfish fishermen, you know. That's true. They, they, they typically catch what they need. If they do catch more, they typically share it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of our heritage of going back yeah. to times when, you know, that maybe during the Depression yeah. when that's exactly our granddads what. and our grandmothers, that's what they taught us and they got passed down. 
This is one of my, one, I have so many favorite stories out of my book. On, on some of the interviews, this story was told a couple of times. Some of these captains would come in, this was during the Depression era, and in, in the 30s and all, and early 40s during the war, and they would catch a lot of fish, of course, mm -hmm. and it, that didn't affect the Depression. But there were folks in town that could not buy those fish, and what those captains did, and they told me, they personally told me, they would leave that wire basket, a big old basket, they would leave it on the dock, and people were embarrassed to come get it, but later on they would come get some fish out of that basket. It's sort of understood that Captain Joe was coming in Saturday, he's going to have some fish, and they wouldn't go get a whole basket full. They'd get four or five out for their family, then somebody else down the street. This is down in St. Andrew, right there, close, close to where the shrimp boat is. They would come and do that, and that's the story talking about the giving hearts of these, these fishermen. And that, yep. That's one of my favorite stories when I when I'm doing some interviews. I'd ask somebody, oh yeah, yeah, for, for years there during that depression they were doing that. And I know they did in Appalachia Coal, the same thing. Yeah. And, and over mean, in Destin. I remember an old uh, Greek fellow down there, John Vathis, that he, he did a lot of tutoring on me when I was young. Yeah. He used to say, you know, we didn't know a depression was on because we were dirt poor anyway and we were strictly living off the bay. We're living off the bay, that's right. And uh, mm -hmm. and that was in its prime, so it wasn't yeah. a better living. <laughs> <laughs> well, things are better now, though. We got big old sleek boats and everything, and things are better. So. Uh, we got to wrap it up. Time is flying by. It up. We didn't have anything to talk about, did we? It flies <laughs> by. I tell you, I enjoy coming. Thank you for uh, having me, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Thank Good you. Job. Appreciate it. Any questions on boats? Anything we're going to talk about? Uh, any, any kind of uh, how to prepare them or get them ready? But and stay out of the channels. The other that, channels, if you're yeah. by yourself, use your kill switch. <laughs> yeah, now let right. you drive, let your wife drive some. Uh, amen. Good job. We're going to wrap it up. Thank you all for watching Panhandle Outdoors. We always appreciate the viewership. We appreciate you doing good things for your fellow man. You have a great day. Enjoy the outdoors and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.